I will usually ask young people, who are you? Okay. It's very difficult for people to talk about themselves. People just need to talk about what they've been trying to achieve, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But knowing who you are starts from one thing. If you die today, what would you be remembered for? Okay. As a young person, if paraventure anything happens to you and you go, what would you be remembered for? Because there are a lot of under 30 people who are already making changes in their in their sectors. They're already experts in their fields. So the mm. first thing you need to do is knowing who you are. The second thing, what value do you provide? Anywhere you go to, what value do you carry? In your church, in your community, in the school, in your workplace, what value are you known for? Understand the value you carry and then how do you present that value to people? How do you serve? Hi, it's good to see you again. Good afternoon. How, how are you, Destiny? Very well, thank you. How have you been? I'm happy good. Sunday. I'm good. Yes, yeah. happy Sunday. Yeah, sorry about what happened the last time we were supposed to meet. I was quite really not myself. I was stressed because I just got back from work. And <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's, it's good it's we're okay. having this conversation again. It's it's a very yeah. interesting one. Thank yeah. You. So how how is Lagos? Come again. I didn't get Hello, I, I, I say how how is Lagos? Lagos is doing great. Uh, Lagos is fine. Uh, we're just um you know trying to recharge ourselves for the puzzling and hustling of the next day which is a monday yeah uh i was stepping out at the very early hours to fix some issues you know i'm having some strategic meeting with my team to evaluate okay. the last performance okay and also um just get to move with what's what's going on mm, mm, mm. all right so destiny let's 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 do it let's do this you are please uh, introduce yourself to my audience. Tell them who you are and what you do. So my name is Destiny Agbanimo, and I'm a business development manager and also uh, a venture builder with over eight years of experience in the field. And I currently head funding a partnership with the co-innovation and incubation for startups. So most times we see a lot of young founders who are not really insightful, who have not gotten the insights to build their startup to that market fit stage. So what we do mm. basically is to make sure that they have the right support system, the required funding to ensure that they scale as per how they want to scale. Mm. So that's what we do at the co-innovation center. And in the last uh, couple of years, I've facilitated sessions around career development, uh, educational advancement using technology. Uh, we talk about innovation, driving innovation across different systems, and uh, see how we can integrate innovation into every businesses that we find ourselves. And also supporting most of the international development partners for program implementation. So I do a whole lot of things, but it's just around me trying to provide solutions to the most pressing problem in our society and community. Yeah. Okay. So you, you mentioned, uh, and I I also saw it in your in your profile that uh, about uh, yeah a strategic partnership. Okay, okay. I I believe that uh, uh, strategic partnership is a uh, partnership are uh, maybe the second most important uh, ingredient for success uh, yeah. for individuals. Okay, uh, businesses and countries. Okay, yeah. now we 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 need to take it very seriously. Okay, mm -hmm. so t tell us tell us about your views about a uh, 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 strategic partnership and what partnerships have have you are you guys working on and trying to develop? Okay, so that's a very interesting question. So. Uh... In the last couple of years, we've done quite a lot of projects and um, of which we do not have all the required capacity to deliver. Sometimes we talk about sustainability. We talk about, um, you know, penetration. We talk about market penetration or yeah. grassroots penetration or engagement. Yeah. And somehow we do not have 
all the required capacity. So we look yeah. at for technical partners. We look at for, we look at for people who are good in the grassroots engagement. Some people who are very brilliant in the stakeholders engagement. We look at for people who have strategic funding partnership existing with some international donors and yeah. who will be willing to fund these projects we are working on. So what we do basically is that we do what we call a partnership map. The partnership map helps to identify the areas of implementation so we can yeah. see people who only want to fund who only want to partner with people providing services or providing project uh, solution in the education sector we yeah. see a lot of partners who want to look at the climate change we see partners who want to look at human capacity building and all of that so we do the partnership map to identify the core areas the strengths and the the penetration you have so what is your experience as a partner in most of the states we have in Nigeria? We need to get those reports. What are your challenges? What are, what are the kind of stakeholders you are currently working with? So once we have those things, we need to go into strategic partnership in the long term. Somehow we used to put in the long term because we want to see uh, projects having huge sustainability. So yeah. about environmental, environmentally and economically. Yeah. So why do I think partnership is important? As an organization or as an individual, you cannot do everything alone. Yeah. You have your weaknesses, right? So it's for you to look at other organizations or other individuals systems, or institutions yeah. who can, you know, collaborate with you to design a particular solution and implement that particular solution, right? So for the common goal and for the common good, we see a long-term impact. Why? Because we have two systems coming to place to partner to achieve a common goal. So it makes sense because you can't assume yourself as all the strengths. Only one. Yeah, it, 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 it can, you can be good at something. You cannot be good at everything. And again, when you talk about project management, there are a lot of components, right? There are a lot of components involved. It could be communication and advocacy. It could be campaign awareness. It could be monitoring and evaluation of projects. It could be stakeholders engagement. There are just several components that when you put them together, you achieve the common goal. So it is important that we do some kind of gap analysis, understand the strengths, and also see how we can partner with uh, the required or the necessary partners to just do an overall implementation. So it's very important in any business. It's important in a in a product management. So in product management, we call it API integration, right? Okay. So using Flutter with API to come into your own kind of thing. So you yeah. they're your technical partners. It, it's different from them being your B2B uh, clients. Okay. So that's See, why it's important. Yeah. I, 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 li I like what you just said. See, uh, right now, I'm doing a strategic partnership with this podcast. Okay. To help the podcast grow, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm I'm currently uh, talking to several partners, potential partners, in a various countries in Africa to yeah. help the podcast grow. See, yeah. I understand clearly what you just said. Okay. Now, why I why am I very interested in this? Because as a society, we Many of us do not realize that uh, our businesses, our personal lives can move forward faster, better, if we get partners. So it's important to, to help young people understand the need of collaboration yeah okay uh that's one of the things that we have lacked very much as a society now am i saying we don't ha we haven't had partners to do certain things we have but we have not been very strategic okay we have not been very strategic we get partners to do certain things in our country and in the, in the long run Either the partners will get most of the benefits and the country will get minimum. Or the partners, after a while, will be frustrated and they will leave. Yeah. You see, developing a solid strategic partnership yeah. uh, network in a society 
is very, very vital. Now, when it comes to businesses, young people start starting businesses, and we don't, we 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 are afraid, we are afraid to get other people involved. We want to hold the the businesses totally from it a hundred percent, and that way it doesn't help us to scale the business. Exactly, it doesn't. See, if you get good, very good partners. Give them shares, yeah, to commit them to make the business work. Exactly. You see, we don't do that. That's one of the things that is holding us back. And I like, I like what you guys do. I like what yeah. you guys do. So, yeah. so tell me, what, one, tell me a few of the, uh, the big uh, partners you guys, you guys have. So, um, recently we had the UNDP for the Eco Innovation Center. Uh, mm -hmm. What they were helping us to do was to see how they can accelerate talent, uh, yeah. talent retention in Nigeria, because UNDP has an initiative known as uh, the NGFP, the Nigerian Jubilee Fellowship Program. Mm -hmm. So, what they do is that they pick out young people and try to provide them one year experience on the job. Okay. Right. They're going to be paid. So, UNDP. Uh, it facilitates those processes. So once you are just this new school leaver from the university, they provide you an opportunity to work for an organization for uh, a minimum of, I think maximum of one year, minimum of six months okay. to one year. So once you've been able to gather the required skill sets, they, yeah. they let you go and you know put it into the uh, job market to start okay. providing valuable solutions. So when we did our AOT 4.0, um, we, we had the UNDP as one of our strategic partners. And why was this? Is because we needed to upscale. We needed to cover more areas where they have yeah. issues of talent management. Mm. And again, it was during the era of Jakba. Jakba was really yeah. sound in that period. <laughs> so needed, because, because again, UNDP already have uh, programs that are trying to solve that particular problem. So okay. when we're trying to do a conference, when we did a conference, we saw a lot of partners that we can work with, right? We're, we're trying to seek UNDP as a funding partner on how they can provide support services through their own multilateral or bilateral donors to their own yeah. organization okay. on that kind of scale and make sure that every strategy we've had is achievable, right? Every of our goal, every vision that we had at the Co Innovation Center yeah. uh, were achievable. And again, UNDP were doing a lot of things. And currently, we are doing. Um, some other programs of which I wouldn't want to disclose some very oh, strategic, yeah, that's, that's okay. yeah, very that's strategic okay. partner are there. Uh, you know, <laughs> until we start seeing the programs come to light, we begin yeah, to I understand you know, see a lot of things mm. happening. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You you mentioned uh art of technology. Yeah. Say AOT. Yeah. Now uh you have been involved in those uh initiatives in Lagos, okay? Yeah. Uh, and I saw in your profile that uh, you guys have done the AOT 4.0 and you're about to, uh, are you, uh, maybe you're about to start uh, 5.0, okay? Yeah. I, 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 tell us tell us about the art of technology. What, do, what does it mean? Okay, and, so yeah. the, the art of technology is a conference uh, okay. an event that brings oh, okay. knowledge experts, policymakers, um, actors in the, in the startup ecosystem, the builders, the investors, they bring them together into a room and you know, throw up a conversation, throw up a, a kind of a spark for them to, you know, have some brainstorming, some design thinking, come together, discuss uh, how far Lagos State has achieved in the area of innovation and technology. Mm. And what are the areas for uh, the stakeholders in that in that room? And yeah. also, what do the experts, the knowledge experts, think we can do better to drive innovation in Lagos State? So that's okay. what AOT does in the overall. So I joined the Co-Innovation Center at the process of uh, when they were just finishing AOT 3.0 and starting AOT 4.0. So okay. I was part of the team for AOT 4.0, um, heading funding and partnership, right? So we were able to design the concept, 
We uh, look out for sponsors to sponsor the event. We look out for other partners to come in and uh, you know just give us some technical support on what they can provide. And also reach out to a lot of amazing speakers across um, Nigeria and Africa. And again, we yeah. invited about eight countries, uh, eight individuals representing different innovation ops in mm. Kenya, uh, Ghana, Rwanda, Morocco. Uh, we invited someone from Bangladesh. We invited a lot of a couple of guys, and again for Egypt, uh, to to come and tell us what is working well in their own country and how. Yeah, and Egypt is a, is a is a is a good one yeah. because uh, yeah. there are so, so many things are going guys. on in there. Exactly. So there were the big guys in the in in the in their own countries. So they needed yeah. to come to Nigeria and tell us what they think can work well for us. And we, we got one of our keynote speakers for Bangladesh who gave some amazing presentations and, uh, you know, things were put do, in do, order. Do you guys have, have some of those, those uh, presentations online that people can watch? Uh, yeah, we do. We do. You can just go to the YouTube page, I think. Okay. Uh, yeah, we do. We do. Just go to the YouTube page and you'll see uh, some of the materials. They, okay. They okay. Yeah. I will, I, I, I would uh, encourage my, my listeners to, oh, great, to great. check it out yeah so uh, this year we'll be having AOT 5.0 and what are we talking about in AOT 5.0 we want to look at the creative economy and the smarter Lagos so okay. the creative economy now in Nigeria is very big right there are a lot of investments coming into the creative sector the creative industry right yeah and we are not tapping the, the best assets from this particular creative economy now we use the story of the recent uh, young rising star that who recently passed on and there've been a lot yeah, of yeah. I I, I saw I saw I saw the guy. What's yeah. his name? Mobad. Uh, well, yeah. yeah. I see. I, I I don't know a lot of young artists nowadays. I I I don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, it is. It is. So, I'm too old. <laughs> so that that's that's the thing. And again, we have we are seeing a lot of people wanting to invest in the creative industry, right? Mm. You, you see a lot of VCs, a lot of angel investors looking at the creative economy. How can they invest in the creative economy and, you know, get back their returns of investment? Because it's yeah. big, you know. It's big, yes. uh, There's nowhere in Europe, there's nowhere outside in Africa. You wouldn't mention the name Bonaboy, Whiskey, Davido. They are big and they are, and they are generating a lot of money and they are also um, supporting young people, young stars. And you get, so if we can look at that area, apart from the music industry, we also look at the um, painting and art, uh, the drama, a whole lot of them like that. So we want to focus on that sector and see what are the opportunities in that sector and mm. invest. So mm. the Lagos mm. government are very excited about this initiative, and that's why we are pull, we are pushing forth for this conversation. A lot of people are coming. We we've got uh, several amazing speakers. A lot of tech sponsors have been on board. A lot of media sponsors. Just quite a lot of people are on board, and we can't just wait to have. That event December yeah. 7th. So wh when is it? Is it December, yeah. December, December what? 7th. December 7th. 7th. Okay. How how long uh, is it? I will need to confirm that. Okay. Uh, just two days, two days or three days okay. or so. Okay. Yeah. So I'll drop you the link for, for people that want to register. Want to Very good. Speak. Yeah. yeah. Speak yeah. See, uh the creative economy is uh massive. Okay. Uh Nigeria in particular has done a lot of great work. The 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 artists have done great work. And yeah. I'm happy that the government, people like you, are getting uh, excited, wanting to to tap in there. Okay. See, yeah. Tori, I I've always said from when I was young, see, I look at I've looked at as as a young boy. I look at the our coastline, and I think to myself, if we had a road straight from Barbage across that road, straight on on the on, on, close to the shore, across there to go right right down to Calabar. You see, see, that's my imagination as a, as a young boy yeah. thinking yeah. about it. Straight along from Bar Beach to Calabar, how many villages, towns can be can benefit from that road? Hotels, I mean, we can have so many things along that road. 
Yeah, I agree. Well, that's my that, that's my imagination. I, I still have it. Okay, I'm still hoping yes. that someday some smart people uh, in our in our in our country can see this and maybe actually make it happen. Mm -hmm. Because we have so many things that will in, drastically improve a society. And I'm happy. I'm happy that people like you are making things happen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, good, good, good. Your, your, your work uh, uh, and in initiatives have uh, attracted and secured several funding from big organizations, UNDP, yeah. World yeah. Bank, and, uh, and others. Yeah. Yeah. So where, where are you heading in the next decade? What's the what's uh, the future future like? So, so the future for us, um, looking at the partners we've gotten, looking at the contracts and some of the opportunities we've been able to get from the UN systems and other international organization. Yeah, uh, we have a problem in Nigeria. Mm. And we have a problem in Africa. Um, some of the biggest um solution that we've designed to solve most of these problems are, are directed to talent management. Uh, the SDG eight we're talking about we talks about decent growth, decent um, work and economic growth. Yeah, and also uh, looking at the area of health, the SDG three, and lastly talking about climate change. Climate change is also another conversation we are driving in Nigeria and across Africa. So we have mm -hmm. talent management, you know, connecting it to decent work and economic yeah. growth. We are talking about uh, climate change. We are talking about health. These three bodies connect to each other. So whatever uh, proposal we are submitting to the UN, to the World Bank, or to the GIZ, we are making sure that there's a connection with these three. Talking about okay. policy, talking about the coherence of delivery, talking about the collective outcome. So the, the talent, the capacity building of people, we are talking about our environment, we're talking about climate change, I was talking about health, the, the yeah. well-being of people. So there's a connection. So what we need to look at the next decade is to see how we can secure more multilateral or bilateral funding okay. to upscale this intervention. We have over 774 communities in Nigeria, local uh, government areas in Nigeria. I will tell you for a fact that we've not been able to cover 50% of those communities because mm -hmm. there are some hard to reach communities of which we are designing solution, which is very expensive AI driven solution that can touch those people in the end part. Yeah. Right? So how can they get the message? How can they be part of the change? How can they be sensitized to know exactly how they can, you know, make use of the solution we are providing to them? Because for sustainability sake, we cannot continue to do that, we cannot continue to provide a solution where we do not have strategic funding in place because okay. it's, it's a lot of expense, right? It's a, it's, it's quite very expensive. Yeah, and we need people who wants to uh, bring one or two supports in the area of funding or technical um, support to see how we can drive this particular solution to the grassroots. So the next thing is we see ourselves providing quality solution that covers every problem faced in the climate in our environment, in our people, an area of uh, managing our people to contribute to our national development. So mm -hmm. just about upscaling, because we have over 200 million Nigerians currently, and uh, I can tell you that we've only we've been able to touch less than 5 million people. So that's a very little percent from yeah. 200 million. So we need a lot of funding, and we yeah. also need to uh, create a sustainability framework that we okay. uh, you know, that will last long for us in the yeah. Yeah. In, in many years. Yeah. Now, I'm happy to to hear what you guys are doing or what you guys where are you, where you guys are going. Yeah. Uh, now I I I wouldn't lie. Uh, I'm not like you. I don't have uh, the data, so I don't know exactly uh, the coverage and what is needed exactly. But one thing I know for ex for a fact because I talk to a, a lot of young. Africans, Nigerians, is that like I told, I talked to one of my one of my guys, uh, my very good friend who was on the podcast, uh, the last uh, the last uh, episode. Education. Education is the most important thing in every sector. 
Yeah, education. Now, I, I talk to a, young, a lot of young people and my fear, my fear is that we don't have, I, I don't know how to, how to phrase it. See, the, the, the current generation of young people do not read. Okay, and if it, um, uh, it scares me that the current generation do not read, and if young people do not read, they are opening themselves to be manipulated. Yeah. Okay, because you don't read, you don't you haven't gathered enough information in a, in a particular area. Yeah. Someone will just come and tell you some fantastic stories. Yeah. And you buy it. Exactly. Okay. That's that see, this is my biggest fear for Africa, Nigeria, mm -hmm. and other countries. Because mm -hmm. the future of the continent, our young people do not have the information about certain things. Now, the problem is about the information is that it's not, it's not about the, the information is not there. The information is everywhere. But somehow, somehow, young people who have been convinced not to pick up a book and read. You see, now, the same thing in the West, the same thing here. Young people do not pick, a, pick up a book they would rather listen to something on YouTube, okay? So you are right. A lot of people uh, do not value the essence of reading. They, they are yet to see the light. They are yet to see okay. the picture. Good. Uh, which is a very, it's a pandemic. It's, it's a pandemic. See, once young people do not read, they, they are very easily deceived. And for us, as Africans, wanting to bring a continent to catch up with the more developed countries, we have a problem. We have a problem if we don't read because education is the most important ingredient in everything we want to in do. Every sector, yeah. In every sector, yeah. In every sector, the most important thing is education. Mm -hmm. Now, when I say education, yes, schooling is good. Okay, I'm, I'm a big advocate of schooling. 12 yeah. years compulsory for everybody. Yeah. But, but if we do not pick up books and read, yeah. if we don't pick up books and read, we are putting ourselves on a continent in danger. So that's my that's my take on that. So, so, exactly. so sometimes I talk to I talk too much about it, but is that is that important? <laughs> yes, you know? yes, yes, you're right. You know, so I'm I'm happy you guys are, are working on, on on this and uh, yeah. So, but reading education is uh, is uh, very important. Now. Unlike most people, uh, you boldly declared on your on your uh, LinkedIn page your love of God. I like that. Now I will tell you the truth. I'm not religious. I once was, but I'm not in anymore. But anybody who is bold enough to tell everyone else, me, I'm here. I like that. Yeah, I do. Uh, yeah, uh, I do. So, so tell us, tell us a little bit about your belief in God. And just like I said, yeah. So just like I said during the at the four helps, talking about the fitness. I said I was an evangelist of the four helps. Uh, we mm. talk about the fitness, the faith, the finance. And the family, because uh, if you check 
a complete man, his life revolves around the four Fs. And I tell mm. most of my friends what, and my what, what's the four, four I Fs find uh, an opportunity to speak with. The four Fs is fitness. Yeah. So this talks about your mental fitness, your physical fitness. And the second is your faith. Okay. So your faith could be, could be a Christian faith or anything. Yeah, but your, you need to be your spirituality. Something, something yeah, that okay. is driving right you. Yeah, okay. your spirituality. And the, the third one is your family. Your family means that you're a builder. You are, you are trying to build some legacy. I'm sure your family, you build that. Yeah. And the fourth one is your finance. As a okay. man, your finance is very important. You need to work out because your finance is going to give you access. It's going to give you confidence. It's going to give you leverage. You know, very it's going good. to make you uh, a doer, right? So without finance, you can't do anything. So why mm. do I... Why do I declare my love for God? All my life, I grew up in a Christian home. And um, um, I started playing drum sets in church. I used to okay. love the world. I used to listen to the gospel very well. And I love God for that. Mm. And I love the fact that um, his words were really were really making sense to me at a very young age. Mm. It made a lot of sense. It touches every area or every aspect of my life. Let's talk about finance. Talk about how to maintain yourself. Anything at all in the Bible. It's, it's content in the Bible, right? So I love that aspect. And again, yeah, the brotherly love and the kind of uh, the community love I grew up from. I, I yeah. didn't want to let go of that love. So when I talk about my love for Christ, it's because him is love. He loved was uh, exhibited across our families, across our communities when we were much younger. So growing up to deviate from that angle was really very impossible. And I, I've I've seen opportunities where I be longing for something, and I just pray to God, I God, please, if you can give me this, I pray, I work hard, I get the revelation, I'm motivated in my spirit, and I just yeah. do things. It happens. There's, there's 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 been a lot of miracles. There's been a lot of great revelations that come from loving God. And it's, it's just my perspective. I've seen a lot of people who say, ah, they, they don't believe in Jesus. They don't believe in it. It's, it's their own because we all have different spirits and every man is guided by spirits. Yeah. So I believe that my spirit is from God and I need to trust him. And I need to believe that anything that I'm passing through, once I follow his word, once I follow what he says to me, I, I, I become free from anybody. So it, it's been a very great call and I really declare my love for God. Great, great. See, uh, Destiny, uh, you, your, your, your name is uh, depicted okay. in, your, in your belief. Okay. Okay. Uh, like I said, I once was a uh i was once a christian okay i would say okay now there is no there is nothing wrong being a man of faith see i i i, I need to say yeah. that because okay. Okay. because many people believe that uh, once somebody says he's not religious that means he's against religion not not me Okay. Now, sometime earlier, some years ago, maybe the way I talk might have given people that that notion, but mm -hmm. the way I see things now is uh, a lot, a lot different. Okay. Now, yeah. Am I now? I am I now a believer? Not, and most likely would not be. Okay, but. See, I encourage my daughters, I have, to, I have to daughters, I encourage them to go to church. The, 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 the values I hold are the values I learned from church. Yeah. yeah. The values I hold are the values I learned from church. And I see this, this generation of young people are uh, trying to grab onto something. But because most of them do not believe in God, they're trying so hard to grab to something and they can't find the thing and they are making up all kinds of stories. Yeah. See, 
they are trying to grab onto something which they can't find, okay? And they're making up all kind of all manner of stories. And it's for me, it's 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 hurting them so badly. Mm -hmm. Okay. I see, I speak to a lot of young people and I hear them, the desperation of them looking for something which they can't find. <laughs> okay. See, uh, so I, I tell my daughters, go to church, read the Bible, at least have the foundation. Okay. Yeah. You can, when you grow up, the foundation you might elevate it and scrap some some parts, but they have you already have the foundation. See, mm -hmm. really, religion helps us build stable foundation. Yeah, I agree. Okay, religion mm -hmm. help us build stable foundation on which we can now build our skyscrapers. Yeah. So the 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 younger generation are suffering so badly because they don't have a foundation. So uh, yeah, I agree. That, that, I agree that's why I'm, I'm happy when I saw that on your profile. Yeah, yeah, you are a, a believer. That's good. Thank you. Uh, so like like I said earlier, uh, education. Is uh, very vital. Yeah. Okay, uh, so I I am a lover of of books. Yeah, I am a lover of books. I read a lot. Okay, and I I want to I encourage my 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 listeners my my audience to read books. Okay, so Destiny, I want yeah. you to recommend five books okay for them to to buy okay. and, and put and put in their library and then maybe maybe someday they will pick them <laughs> up and read yes yeah, so, so I, I usually i love books from brent tracy and um who i read quite a lot of his books Who? i am not a fan brent tracy brent tracy Ah. Brian Tracy, you don't, oh, you don't know Tracy, him? Tracy, Tracy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Brian, Brian Tracy. Yes, yes, I, yeah. Brian Tracy. Yes. Yeah. So Brian Tracy, I am a fan of him. Yeah, I, I am too. Several of his books, and uh, I would just advise uh, just pick any of his five books. But okay, my own preference is one. Um, no excuses. Twenty one yeah. weeks of discipline. I, I have it somewhere somewhere here. Mm -hmm. Oh great! Oh so yeah, I have. I've read that a lot. I've read um. Uh, um, this one currently, Master Your Time, Master Your Life, is a very great book. Okay, Brent Tracy great. too. Good. And um, I love some books of Robert Kiyosaki. Okay. Uh, um, Retire Young, Retire Rich. That used to be my first books. Ah. And also the Psychology of Money. Yeah, the Psychology of Money. Um, what is more important than money? Wow. <laughs> And then the last one, I would I would prefer the person to read the book of David, um, which is Proverbs. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Proverbs is, is a great book written by David. Every man should read. Great book. Great yeah, book. So just, yeah. Just, just yeah. Get to yeah. engulf yourself into that book and get the best out of it. So that, Very that, good. That, that's basically what I would advise. Very good. Thank you for that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I want you to advise uh, young people. Young Africans, see, okay, uh, many, like I said, are struggling. Uh, yeah. yeah, they don't have a foundation. Okay, so we want them to build. We want them to it's build a, a foundation. It's a problem. Okay, they, I, we want them to build a foundation. Exactly. So, and I think, I think, I think, okay. if if they okay. find something to to do that impacts their community, that impact people around them, okay? Mm -hmm. So tell, tell them, what do you advise them to do to, to create value in okay. their communities? So the first thing is know who you are. 
So the hmm. first question, I I always tell them to. I will I usually ask young people, "Who are you?" Okay. It's very difficult for people to talk about themselves. People just need to talk about what they've been trying to achieve, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But knowing who you are starts from one thing. If you die today, what would you be remembered for? Okay. As a young person, if paraventure or anything happens to you and you go, what would you be remembered for? Because there are a lot of under 30 people who are already making changes in their in their sectors they're already experts in their field so the mm. first thing you need to do is knowing who you are the second thing what value do you provide anywhere you go to what value do you carry in your church in your community in the school in your workplace what value are you known for understand the value you carry and then how do you present that value to people how do you serve so for a young person understanding who you are understanding the value you carry and your service those are the three things i usually tell people every other thing are going to flow towards you but you need to know who you are you need to know the value you carry what particular problem are you solving in your society in your business or anywhere and lastly how well are you serving people before you can be a leader of people, and I usually encourage young people to be a leader in their 40. Before you can be a leader of people, you need to first of all serve. Yeah. Serve. What service are you rendering? So by the time you start serving, people will consider that, okay, there's a value deposited in this person. And, and we believe he or she can lead this system. So for young people, I just I just believe that um, get it right know who you are, develop yourself any possible value that can be transferable, that you can transfer to other people yeah. and also solve problems and be a leader Good in your field. Good. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah. My last uh, question, what's your vision for Africa, for Nigeria in the, oh, next, great, 30, uh, in the next 30 years? In the next 30 years, my vision is for us to achieve net zero. Ooh. Every business, everybody should now, live in a When environment. you say net, net zero, in what, in what, in what okay, sense? So net zero is where there is no what, carbon what, emission. So what, what I was saying about net zero is yes. living in an environment where there are no carbon emissions. Ooh, that is that's it, that's it, that's a big one. Zero carbon emission. That's Living a big in one. Environment in Africa, we want where our talents are recognized in house. Zero jackpot. If you want to jackpot, <laughs> yeah, exactly. We need, we that, need that's another people. big one. <laughs> so that's my picture of Africa in the next 30 years. We want the white people to start coming down to our country. Yes. Right. We want the Europeans to start coming down to our country to invest, to do a lot of things. And they want to stay because why? It is secured. We have good health care. We have good education system. We have everything good. So we need them to come work here. So instead okay. of us going out there, we, we, we've not been able to stand well as, a, as, as an independent African or as an independent continent because we have a little of our uh, percentage of people living out to, you know, to, to extend their stay. Right. So I believe we need to focus more on our environment, uh, a place where uh, there will be quality education in place, quality health care in place. And everything is just is just good. And it's, it's just going to be a, a land flowing with milk and honey. Just gonna OK, be <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's it for me the next 30 years. And okay. it's a lot of time and it can be achievable. All right. See now. Great education. Great health care, health care. I'm yeah. all I'm I'm fully on board. Now, yeah, when you say zero emission, net zero zero, uh, I will tell you one, I will tell you for a fact that's not gonna happen. Okay, it's not gonna happen <laughs> anywhere. Okay, it's not gonna happen anywhere at all. In fact, I, I will share something with you after the, the this uh, uh podcast. And secondly, okay. Uh, net net immigration will not happen. Okay, 
See, yeah. immigra immigration, immigration is the only is the thing that has built the world. See, yeah, man, man, mankind has been migrating. Okay, migrating from the first day we came to life. Yeah. Okay. So nobody, nobody will stop migrating. But I agree. Yeah, with you. I, 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 agree, you. I agree with you that I want I want people to be coming to Africa. Yes. Exactly. That, that's one. That's one. I agree. Okay. It will happen. So let's make it happen. Definitely. Let's make it happen. <laughs> Definitely. All right. Destiny. Yeah. Destiny. Yeah. It's be. It's been very, very, very nice to talk to you today. Thank, thank you, you so thank much. Thank you for being a great guest. Yeah, thank you. So we're going to get the recording, right? It's going to be uploaded. Oh, yeah. yeah. You, you, you get it. You get it. All right. All right. Thank you, you so it. much for your time. All right. Uh, it's good talking to you. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye.